All right, guys, today's a new day. Obviously, a uh, uh, couple days ago, I know I got sidetracked with the whole dry rot thing over there. Never got to the battery situation, but I got everything set up and all the tools to make to actually uh, make this project work. So again, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be running this charge controller down into the AGM battery down here. Uh, I got all the supplies I need. I'm going to use 12 gauge wire because it's only a 10 amp fuse and I'm just running it straight off the 100 watt. I am going to put an inline fuse in it, uh, which I forgot to mention. I actually did end up popping the fuse coming from this charge controller to the battery under the hood because I forgot to flip this switch off when I started the motor home. And that's why I did it as a safety precaution. So I'm going to do the same thing with this one, put another fuse in it so that it blows the fuse instead of ruining the charge controller. But cut all the tools to make this look good and then wire this charge controller down to the AGM battery behind the seat and then hook in this separate uh, inverter so that I can have additional power here at night and be able to store some more power. So get the project done. I guess this is kind of part two of my whole battery solar bank uh, install tweak here in the RV. And again, I just feel like I should reiterate to everybody, look, I'm not a professional. I am not even an, an electrician. I just, I've been doing a lot of research and I kind of understand how it works. There's no need to critique me on all the little stuff, but rest assured, I do kind of know what I'm doing and um, I, I'm not worried about every little detail. I'm just kind of making it work for the RV. So don't take anything, you know, like I'm a professional and that you should do it exactly how I did it or tell me that I did it wrong. Just understand that it's going to work and I've got my butt covered. So I will again remind you, this charge controller is only dealing with the 250 watt panel up top. That comes down, that's fused. I've also got it fused right here, another 10 amp fuse there, as well as, I will show you later up at the battery, another inline 10 amp fuse. Uh, why 10 amps? Uh, it's, I guess that's a perfectly good question, except you have to realize that I'm never going to run anything more than 10 amps, no matter the sunniest, brightest day, the sun is directly on top, uh, that 250 watt panel is still rated at 8.3 amps. So it'll never go over 10 amps. So that's kind of my safety gauge here. So that system is all complete and separate now from what I'm gonna show you on this charge controller right here, which I have wired into this sealed AGM battery. Uh, this battery does not emit any odors or vapors. So it therefore it doesn't need to be vented. It is safe for indoors. Again, you'll see fuses all over the place. I've got a 10 amp fuse running here, another fuse here, some backup fuses attached. The reason why there are so many wires going on right now is because I wanted to simplify this whole system. I've got the charge controller itself coming down into the battery from the 100 watt panel on top of the roof. I've hardwired straight from the battery into this inverter here so that I can, as I said, have two more outlets and a USB. When this gets done, I'm simply going to slide this battery behind the seat back here, out of sight, out of mind. This inverter is going to be mounted on top of the lid here, like that, safe. And then I'll be able to plug in chargers and other materials as I need that's completely separate from the 250 watts that I have going on up top. Believe it or not, all of the conduit that you see and all, all of the work that I've put into making all of this seemingly look nice is actually just for safety. I don't want wires. Okay, all, all, all of this material here that I've bolted in, I've taped it all up. I'm trying to keep wires out of Jax's reach and mouth. <laughs> I know it doesn't look the prettiest, but I really don't care. At some point, I may want to just change this in a couple days. I've been changing it so often that uh, you just never know. So for right now, I've got this switch, which will turn off this charge controller. Um, and then this switch is the same thing. So this way, I just it's just kind of like a fail safe. I don't know, I just feel like, like I, I feel like I, I wanna be in control of it a little more. So I'm gonna put a little sign above the uh, steering wheel up there that says, turn off charge controllers. That means I reach back and I flip off my charge controllers. And no matter what happens with the alternator when I start or when I'm driving down the road or my generator or I'm plugged into shore power at a camping park, I know that I'm not going to over voltage anything and ruin anything. Uh, while I was at it, as you can see, I've also added another dual DC outlet up here because I just think that you can never have enough. Remember, I've got the one up there that I mounted straight from the battery. It comes with this one right here by the TV, which also powers uh, the antenna. And now I've got two more right here, and then I'm gonna have this at night. So just, uh, I don't know, why not, right? 
and I've got it all tightly bolted here. All of this is taped. I will remind you that these, okay, yes, they're not in an electrical box. I understand that, but I'm not running 120 volts with these switches. These are just relay switches for my charge controllers. Very low wattage. And there are fuses everywhere. So if something doesn't work, all I have to do is check the fuses. And like I said, I've got spares right here. It's 10 amps right there for that guy right there. Down here, I've got spares right here, a 10 and a 30 ready to go for that one. And um, I'll show you what's going on under the hood. Basically, all I really need to do here is clean up, slide this underneath, throw this on top, mount this on top down there, out of sight, out of mind. Just looks clean. And uh, I'll show you what I got going on under the hood. Okay, now uh, up at this battery here, what I've basically done is I've got only the charge controller from the Renogy coming into this one. And again, you'll see 10 amp fuses. I've got a spare here. I've also fused uh, the DC outlet that I put up in the cab area for charging other stuff. Uh, it's not just to make it look clean. It's just to make it more functional and to make sure that I'm always going to have an extra fuse ready to go, right? Because I don't want to have to dig these out from somewhere else. So, so yeah, that's pretty much how I did it. Uh, if there's an easier way, awesome, cool. If you have... Uh, your own system for doing it that works. I just wanted to show you that uh, I got her done and I'm happy with it. Uh, I've got 250 watts on the roof going to the Red Energy Charge Controller and then going into my main deep cycle batter here, which I can't even upgrade because as you can see the brake lines are right up against the battery right now. Uh, that's all I can do. So, but that'll run all of my DC stuff in there. And then I've got the other 100 water up there, which comes down in the smaller charge controller and goes into that new sealed AGM battery behind the seat. Another 100 watts, I believe it's three amps max that can come in on that one. And then I have the 750 watt inverter right there for using that at night so that I don't, you know, deplete this battery. Because if this one goes out, well, I can't run stuff like the fan above my stove. I can't run the furnace fan if that battery uh, gets too low. So maybe it'll just help me be able to manage my power use a little bit better at night. And it really is just at night that I have a problem. I mean, it's a cloudy day today, but I got solar all day and maintained 12.8 uh, volts. So I'm happy. <laughs> Overcast and cloudy and I still get plenty of battery usage. And when it's sunny, I, I, I can't even use the uh, power up there's just no way to use all that power unless I use a crock pot <laughs> but yeah that's how my, I've got my solar and everything set up now uh, I think I'm happy with it I think I want to give it a try I think I want to just try to enjoy it for a little bit see if it's gonna be enough power and um, be getting back on the road here hopefully we'll get some sunny days where I can actually and I'll try to uh, show you guys what's going on at night, what I use at night, you know, whether I have the TV plugged in, uh, whether I've got my laptop plugged in or other appliances and batteries that I'm charging. And then, of course, I've got the wall to repair. I don't know when I'm going to tackle this, but uh, soon. I'll rip all this stuff out of here. I will take this all the way off to get a closer look, pull out all this dry rot, and uh, see about bracing it with some treated lumber, you know, from the corner to the corner to support the bed frame that's tilted under here to the floor. Uh, support that, I'll recover it. Try to use this same uh, material so that it matches the other side over there. But yeah, that'll be a, a future project. At least we got uh, solar taken care of. All right, and lastly, I got the battery scooted in behind the seat with the inverter on top. It's got its own little on and off switch. Hey guys, Jax here, along with his human servant, Eric. Thanks for watching our RV channel. If you liked the video, give me a thumbs up below. Uh, don't forget to watch all of our other videos. We got some great material out there. Subscribe to our channel so you can get the latest updates here on the road. Can you say hi? Talk to you guys later. <laughs>